Hey guys, we are at the Banning State Park. I'm gonna go check out some of these campsites. It looks pretty quiet in here. I've only seen one person. Picnic area campground, head of the rapids, boat landing. All right, let's go check it out. Weird when you see fire markers on state property for, for residential addresses. Campground. All right, let's go check out it. Check that out first, and then we'll go check out the landing. It said that it required um, registration, just like any place. However, all right, so there's an RV dump station right there. So we know that there's RVs here. It didn't really say that there was very little information on this on this uh, um, on the signs. You know, usually it'll say camping and whatnot. So when I didn't see the RV part of it, I was thinking it was going to be only primitive tent camping. So we're going to see if we can get a look. Oh, here's here's uh, oh, I think let me back up here. I don't know what I just drove past here. Sorry about that, guys. All right, now it's just an exit. I saw those cattle panels there, and I was wondering, what's going on? It's cat, uh, it's gates. Do not know how far back you got to go. Um, there was very, very little information on there. Um, they had some site maps and that sort of thing, but. Um, it didn't really show uh, the campsites either. It was really kind of odd. But you know, to be honest with you guys, I personally think that sometimes these off the beaten path state parks um, and that state forest like that uh, Governor Knowles um, offers everything you can want. Um, and fewer people, uh, to me, is better. When, when, especially when it comes to camping, guys, right? I'm not talking about social get-togethers or even uh, social camping that's different if I'm gonna be out you know at a campsite and doing some fishing and just relaxing eh, I don't want to hear a whole bunch of partying right just want to relax and enjoy so this is still leading us into um, the campsites <coughs> again this is called Banning uh, State Park it's a uh, basically located in uh, Sandstone, Minnesota. We just came across from Wisconsin, uh, western Wisconsin into eastern Minnesota, kind of uh, north from Wisconsin, a little bit more central from Minnesota. Beautiful day out though. Um, my thermostat says 80. There's, there's absolutely no humidity in the air. Nice little breeze. Since this is a state park, it'll be well manicured. But that was really odd that there was nobody at the gate. Yeah, I didn't even say how far back we gotta go here. We're gonna find out together though. I really do love uh, taking a look at these state parks. It really gives me an idea, more of an idea, of what kind of camping I like to do um, if I have to use a state forest. Um, obviously, you guys know that during the winter time, um, I'm down in southwest Arizona boondocking. Um, this year, I'll be down there again. Um, I'll be back down there again. We don't know when we're going to leave because we just uh, we're working through some uh, uh, stuff with the VA uh, surgeries. Uh, I got good news today. Um, I have an appointment on Saturday afternoon for my MRI on my neck, and that's for the laminectomy. That's the that's the big boy. That's uh, that's what I'm trying to do. Um, is get that one taken care of. If I get that one taken care of, the rest of it is pretty easy. That one is going to. Uh, oh, says keep right here. So let's go ahead and keep right. 
and we are now entering the RV portion of this. This is nice. This is really nice. Look at that setup they got. Beautiful. Beautiful setup. Woohoo, Banny. See? That's the thing. This one, this one right here, um, it's going to get very little attention, I think, compared to all the other ones that I know of. I guess this one is uh, uh, less heard of. I can't tell. That's a, I think, I, I didn't see the full hookups. This guy's got a decent setup here. A little mini light. See, this is again, this is a really nice uh, boondocker, or uh, this would be really nice for van life too. There's a lot of, um, let's see, yeah, they got full hookups. These are full hookups. I don't see it in all of them though, so looks like on the left you got full hookups, on the right you've got, um, look at that, you got uh, drink, drinking water here for those that are going on the paths. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. It looks like you got the tent camping here on the right, which all, every one of those sites look amazing. And, well, that looks like tent camping as well. I'm not sure. And I couldn't get my, my, my vehicle uh, permit because there was nobody there. Yeah, that's tent camping. They got a nice little. Thing. I miss doing that. I I do. I think uh, I think. Um, oh, there's a, it says cabin. Oh, there's cabins in here too. Huh? Check that out. I want to back into this spot. I want to go check out this cabin. It doesn't look like anybody's here. If a ranger comes by, I'll just show my ID. and uh, let him decide if he wants to give me a ticket. He could. Gypsy, are you gonna wait here just for a second, honey? Look at that pretty little baby face. God, she's a cutie. Mm. Every time I look at her, makes me happy. Yeah, let me take her out. She could probably. Use a little uh, potty break. Uh, she's gotten so good at uh, getting in the truck and holding it in forever. But we were just out not too long ago, and um, she did her did her thing. So this is a cool little cabin, huh? <coughs> this would be fun, you know. Pitch, throw a tent right there for the kids or something like that. Let's take a look at this cabin. Uh, curious. That's got some single beds in there. Sorry, I know you guys are getting the glare. There we go. It's like four single beds in there. Little table. Oh, it's open. Huh. I probably shouldn't be doing this, but. I right, check this out. There's no air. So you're uh, roughing it. This would be a good little cabin, though, know, if you have a, like a um, an eco flow. Again, there's been a lot of um, nomad van lifers, uh, uh, boondocking enthusiasts, all kinds of people asking a lot of questions about um, solar, solar generators, those sort of things. Um, I'm really not the person to answer some of some of the, those type of technical questions. However, I'm, I'm fairly dialed into the basics and for you nomaders, you, you guys, your van lifers, all, all of that, um, if you find that you need solar and you just can't afford fixed and all that sort of thing, a person can get by with, um, with um, portable solar, like a solar generator, buy some solar panels. Uh, some of those boxes have a lot of amp hours in it. Um, my Graycell T1000 
has 270 amp hours. And to give you an idea, um, and I know I've said it before, I've got 800 watts of fixed solar. I've only got 200 amp hours of lithium batteries. Um, I run short, that's where I bottleneck. Um, I really need to double up the batteries. But what I do um, in, in place of that is I use my, my solar generator. Um, I just typically usually just plug that in at night and that uh, gives me uh, plenty of power the next day. Gypsy, do you need to go potty? Come on, honey, go potty. She's just, a leash is, is just a toy to her. <laughs> She's such a goofball. Are you a goofy girl? Gypsy, what are you doing? What are you doing? She's such a goof. Anyhow, I hop, hop back in the truck and finish this uh, um, Banning State Park tour. Hop in, Gypsy. Come on, baby girl. Hop in. She's like, no, not yet. No, not yet. I'm going to try to go potty. All right. Give her a little privacy. We can walk around here a little bit. Let's see what's going on. Very, very quiet here in this park. I do like that little cabin right there, though, huh? How cool is that? And then, um, yep, there's a lot of uh, campsites like this where there is no power. And so you can see these trees. This is going to be a big tip for you guys that are wanting to get out and do a little camping with your camper, right? And you're like, man, I, I don't have solar and all that sort of thing. Well, you could still get by on a site like this, whoops, on a site like this where there is no full hookups. Granted, there's a nice, beautiful tent spot, but you could, I, I could get my 25 footer in right there, right? But I'm gonna get very little solar and I don't think I can get my Starlink to work through this, right? So that, that's, a, that's a big problem. Um, sometimes what you can do um, to counter the Starlink issue is um, I use T-Mobile home Wi-Fi on the side and I'm close enough off the Interstate 35 that I'm sure I would get really good reception with my, my home Wi-Fi. And that's only like 35 bucks a month or something like that. So that's, a, that's an option for any of you that are um, wanting to do this, wanting to get out here and camp at a very reasonable price. You got beautiful sites. I haven't been bitten by a single bug because it's, it's manicured and they also spray for stuff like that in state parks. I wouldn't even bother trying to figure that out at a, at a national forest, perhaps a state forest. But the manicuring part of it, you know, it looks pretty, looks great, but that isn't even what I would, um, that isn't even what would concern me. What would concern me the most would be uh, the bugs. A lot, a lot of bugs when you get those knee-high grasses that you got to beat down in order to do a little camping in. Come on, Gypsy, get, get in there. Come on. All right. So let's continue on. You can see it's a, a balmy 80. <laughs> it's actually very nice. Very nice out. I got some oiling and some greasing to do. I got something squeaking back there. Yeah. This is the facilities. So this looks like a very small um, state park. But I like that. And look at how quiet that is. This guy had to do a little finagle in there. <laughs> Once you get used to trailering, you always look at stuff and you're like, I could do that. I could do that. <laughs> You guys, if you want to see something really cool and interesting, go back and look at Mary and Gary's uh, deal when they were, I don't know if we filmed it though, when we were getting that, uh, getting his uh, trailer in um, and do his uh, pole barn. That was pretty, pretty interesting, pretty cool. 
All right, so there's paths and walkways and everything. Um, I, I know I did see another sign uh, for a landing and falls. Let's see if we can go up here and find it because I would like to see that. I would really love to see, show you guys some of the falls here in Minnesota. We have a lot of them. Well, I think they're everywhere, but I wanted to show you some of those, especially around Taylor's Falls and that. There's a... Uh, I think they're really pretty. I just love being around water in general. Um, but yeah, we're going to see if we can't find this. We just toured the uh, campsites, which I think is, I, th I really kind of like that place. What did you think? There was maybe a dozen people in there total and a lot of empty spots. And um, you can do it. You can do it. <laughs> Let's remember what movie that's from. It's actually from a couple different movies. Yeah, this is absolutely a beautiful day out here for this. Gypsy and I, we're just out cruising around, checking out state parks, forests, and stuff like that today. Uh, we'll probably be doing a lot more of that. Um, I think it's kind of cool. Just see what we can find, some historical markers, some sightseeing, um, until I go under the knife, because. Once that happens, uh, I'll be laid up for a little while. I don't even know. Last time I had this operation, I couldn't even talk for a little while because I'll show you. With a laminectomy, what they do is they go through the front. Well, they actually cut this way. And then they remove everything that's in there. And they get back there and they open up the spine. They throw a bunch of pins in there. And then they uh, cross their fingers, give you a bunch of medications, and shoot me a call tomorrow. <laughs> but anyhow, I'm really excited about finally getting that um, um, order filled with the GP uh, to go see, uh, to get that, to get this MRI. So yeah, that'd be awesome. All right, let's turn this back around because I'm not here for me. You're here for that little one right there, but she's uh, knocked out. Hey, there, right, Gypsy Room. Gypsy! Look at that cute little puppy face. Can you believe she's uh, going to be eight months old already? She is uh, getting big. I think she's going to be topping out pretty soon, though. Um, and she's going to be smaller than my other two boxers were, I think. It looks like that so far. At first, she had these huge feet and, I mean, she was all feet and legs when she was born and really big feet. I thought she's going to be a monster. Her dad uh, is a big boy from what I understand. But she's 40 pounds and, I, you know, there's not much, there can't be much left because my other two boxers, they kind of... Uh, you know, when they got older, then I think they maybe hit 50 pounds, but huh. I don't know. I think I might have passed up that one area. I sure did. Sure did. All right. So with that being said, I uh, hope you guys enjoy this absolute beautiful. Oh, wait a second. Head of Rapids. No, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't miss it. Let's, one more try. Let's see. Hopefully it's not five miles down. think that they're not gonna those uh, game wardens and whatnot won't do it they can't give you any ticket up but police officer can give you they actually have even uh, more jurisdiction in, in a lot of cases like for instance if, if they think you're poaching or whatever they don't even need a, um, they don't need uh, uh, a warrant like a city or county or anything like that they got access to your gear and your home, if, if you're if you have, if you're over your limit, say fishing or hunting or whatever, and they uh, say, hey, we got to do some more checking, and this literally happened to uh, an old uh, old coworker. Um, and the f odd thing was, is he worked part time for the DNR as a volunteer, and uh, they got him. They got 
about him. I think they uh, took away his hunting license for like five years, hunting and fishing license. It could have been a lot worse. But, um, yeah, it happens. Now he's a sheriff down, uh, down in southern Minnesota. Good old Dean. He's a good guy. We were young. We were in our early 20s when we worked together. So that was uh, about three decades ago. Golly. When I say stuff like that, I just sound old. I am. Wow, this is way back here. Uh-oh, I think that might have been it right there. Road launch, boat launch traffic only. Okay. Well, we tried, and this is the, just the picnic area, so the it appears that the uh, falls part might not be accessible. They even have EV stations in a lot of these state parks. You guys noticed that? I just literally drove by them. I mean, good thing for them, but it's pretty wild. Putting those things in everywhere. All right. That being said, guys, thanks for sticking around. Um, we're going to be doing some more, but uh, today's going to be it. Uh, that's going to be it for today. We're going to um, go check out. There's a few more parks that I really want to check out this week. Um, a couple of my big names, like Chippewa. Um, I want to go up and hit up Chippewa. Uh, I do. I would like to hit up a, another national forest. Chippewa, they also have a national forest up there too, other than just a state park, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Either way. Um, we're going to be um, doing a lot more of this. Um, I, I, if you guys could think of something on some kind of a grading system for state parks, I would appreciate that because I'm looking for ideas. This is something where I'd like to catalog it and uh, actually, you know, have a folder or file for, you know, for state park reviews uh, and that, that sort of thing. All right. Well, if you think of anything, throw it down there. Throw it down there. <laughs> All right. Have a go good day, guys. Bye. Gypsy says bye too.